Welcome to the Red Raider Coaches Show. I'm your host, Joe Hayes, and I'm here with our head football coach, Keith Goss. Coach, uh, a little right. bit of rain coming today. <laughs> a little bit of rain. A little Got us all kind yeah. of stirred up. and Yeah, the, uh, it's making tough to, to paint the lines on the field. We'll get it all down. I hear you. So, uh, speaking of that, I guess typically for those that don't know, when you have a wet field and can't get paint down, sometimes I know I've seen you guys do it at nighttime, but you have to wait till game day sometimes and get out there in last minute. Right. Sometimes it's just what it has to be done. And, and Coach Coley uh, does a great job of, of handling and, and really taking the bull by the horns when it comes to, to painting. So the rest of us just kind of help out where needed. I got you. I got you. Well, Coach, we uh, – Coming off another difficult loss uh, this past Friday, uh, first big overtime game uh, I remember in a long time in Bacon County history. Uh, I could be completely wrong with that, but just uh, the other night I was trying to think back when the last game and just off the top of my head, I, I couldn't even remember. Well, you know, the thing about that game is, you know, we've, that's the first game my guys have, have been in that's, that's that nature, a really tight game. The games we've lost, we've lost by one or two scores. The games we've won, um, you know, we've won by a larger margin. So that was the, the first game where it's, it's you know, an overtime, you know, down to one score at the end, and, and you have an opportunity to win it. And, and that's, you know, that's a, a learning situation for us. You can yeah. simulate so many things in practice, and we do. We have a practice on Tuesday where we work all sorts of different situations. Um, but until you're in that situation and you and you learn from it and grow from it, um, you know nothing's going to prepare you like being there. That's right. That's right. And so that was the first time we've we've played a game of that nature, and uh, our guys competed hard. Um, we're still growing every week and learning. Um, just you know, you, everybody, including myself, we just we could find a way to come away with. It. Yeah. Well, coach, I, you know I, I know uh, nobody walked away from that game. Uh, just mad as all get out. You know, we're, we were upset, and it hurts to, to lose an emotional game like that. But, you know, right after it happened, you know, the first thing I thought of is this team last year beat us by 38 points. And Yeah, last year it was uh, – yeah, I think we lost 38 nothing. I don't think we even scored on them. Yeah. So to rack up 400 yards of offense in the course of the year, you know, there's, there's a ton of positives that you, there can, is. you can pick out of the game. Um, with that being said, I mean, I don't care what it is. I want to win. Oh, I know. And, and, we and, all do. <laughs> and um, and so, I know the players do. And the players do. Uh, you know, they they were uh, obviously upset, you know, at, at the uh, conclusion of the game. And, um, you know, it's starting to mean more to them. Yeah. Because that wasn't, uh, you know, always the case last year. Um, but it is now. The more you put into something, the harder it is, the harder it is to, to get beat at it. And the more, the more it means to you, and the harder you play. So as we continue to grow as a program, um, you know, we're, we're going to find a way to start winning the competitive games and, and continue that climb. I mean, it's, there's, they're a great team. I think they're yeah. ranked seventh in the state in AA. And, uh, you know, I feel like we, we played a, a good game. We didn't. Uh, protect the football, which is um, something we have to do to be successful. There was a couple uh, – we, we gave away a couple turnovers, and, and in my mind, that's the difference. Um, yeah. You look at the games we won uh, this season, we didn't turn over the ball. You look at the games we've lost, we've had at least one turnover. We protect the football in most games, and we win. Coach, um, you know, talking about that, I know a lot of times after a game there's a lot of takeaways, and, you know, and a lot of people have – different opinions into what they think may be the cause or um, aided to the cause of losing the game. And, and there was a few questionable calls by referees. It's two weeks in a row that we've had very questionable calls. Yeah. As a coaching staff, how do you, how do you guys deal with that? How I mean, do you, you, you know? You, you acknowledge, I mean, first of all, nobody's perfect. I mean, any, any given person can make a mistake on the call. Do I feel like some mistakes were made? Uh, from my viewpoint, well, yes, but they're made, and, and we don't control that. We have to focus on the things we can control. I can't control whatever holding call that referee, you know, saw on the goal line after Mason scored and we were celebrating in the end zone. 
uh, that would have put us up 28 to 14 in regulation. I can't control that. Um, I looked at, I looked forward on film. I didn't see it. That is what it is. Yeah. I mean, we don't, we don't have the, the instant replay. We don't have, um, any other way to challenge it. I can, I can talk to the referees association afterwards. I send, send in film. I often do. Um, but I'm not ugly about it. I, I just hope to get better referee. Right. Um, or educate them even more by where they see the mistakes that they made. Right. Um, and just like we watch our film and we find out how to get better as, as a player and, and as a coach, um, you know, they have to do the same thing. And, and most, you know, associations do. I know the association that we use here does that, and that's the way they look at it. Uh, they want their, they want to have you know great refereeing crews. They ask for film if there's something questionable, and we send it to them. Right. And uh, you know that's that's really the only way things are going to get better. I mean, it's not going to get better by just screaming at them when they make a mistake. Um, yeah, you know, I, I know very few things in life yeah. that get better from you just screaming at it when there's a problem. I've heard you say it um, with you and I having our sit down. Um, private conversations and talking, but, um, you know, so Raider Nation knows too, as, as a head coach, when you have something like that, there's an, an emotional call, uh, you know, what do you do to keep your, again, your players and your coaching staff, like, yeah, I know you just said there's a, we can't change the outcome, so we, we played our case, they didn't overturn it, we right. have to go with it. So I, I teach my guys just to continue to play. When we work in the in the situational practices, um, you know, I purposely give our guys bad calls, so that if they, there's a call that they think's bad, they got to learn to to essentially you know shut their mouth and continue to play. Yeah. Because arguing with the referee isn't going to change his mind. It's not going to change the situation. It's not going. It's not going to make anything better. In fact, it may just give us another bad call. That's right. So, um, because they're, they're emotional, uh, referees are people, and you know whether they mean to do it or not, that that very well could be the outcome. So, we work on that. We work on that with our players, you know, to just keep their mouth shut and play the next play. And I think they did, for, yeah. you know, for they the did. most part. And, and, I, and I'm proud of that because that wasn't that wasn't our mo. And that's not the way we went about business um, when I first got here. Right. And so I am proud about the growth and the development of our guys in, in that part of the game because, you know, that's uh, actually, the, you know, their, their head referee came over and spoke to me and, and, and talked about how respectful my players were. And I just told him thank you and, and then, you know, we're, we're going to send them off the field. Yeah. And that's the only way to make things better and, and have a better reputation because referees talk like anybody else, yeah. you know, does. And so they're like, you know, well, this team, they act crazy, they do this, they do that, that. Well, now that referee association went back and said something good about um, Bacon County. Now, do do I wish the calls went different? Sure. But once again, we don't control that. Our response to it and how we go out and play the next play and the play after that and the play after that will determine if we can overcome whatever adversity is in front yeah. of us. And that's that's not just a football skill, that's a life skill. And, and that's in all – uh, levels of football, you know, at the college level, you see it happen in, in a professional level. In the NFL, you see it happen. And, and a lot of coaches have the same response you did. And ultimately, we've got, you know, we control our own destiny. Right. And you got to put yourself in a position where one or two or three bad calls doesn't. Does it, uh, doesn't end the game for you, doesn't, yeah. doesn't take you out of the game. And, and why I feel like we can compete with everybody um, that we play, I do. Yes. Um, I, I think we have to be, you know, be smart when we make a mistake, find a way to overcome it, and have that type of mentality. And, and we've gotten significantly better, and, and we're going to continue to work on improving that. And, that. and I've heard you say that before, too, like, okay, we lost this down, but let's go win the next one. Right. There, and, and get ahead. And that's, that's the, the, the way you have to look at it. And, you know, we're going to continue to build that in our young men. Yeah. Well, Coach, it was definitely an exciting atmosphere. Um, you know, the stadium was unbelievable. The turf, it looked like there at the start of the game, we had a few slipping problems uh, with players getting footing and stuff. But 
uh, as the game progressed, I think our players improved on their cuts on what they felt like they could make and couldn't make without right. slipping around. Playing on turf, uh, you know, for the first time, it's it's different for kids. And um, but I, I think our guys adjusted well. I don't they feel, did. I don't feel like it was a major you know issue for our guys. Um, so you know, we're just gonna do keep what on. We do. Keep That's on, right. Keep on <laughs> Um, Coach, let's talk about offense uh, in the game versus Toombs County. Uh, again, you mentioned a little over 400 yards. I uh, want to definitely give two big shout outs here that we've finally uh, put it to press that Mason Michael, uh, uh, the Bacon County Wall of Fame, put up a post where they went back and researched. And uh, Gary Graham was the previous record holder for uh, uh, the most touchdowns passes in a season. Correct. Uh, it was 15. Uh, was the record, and that was from 1962. So it was a 58-year-old record. That's, that's a pretty good run for, that is. for Gary's record. It uh, is. So I know he was he was probably happy to have it for that long, and he's, he's probably happy to see it get yeah. So he passed the torch on to Mason. We want to congratulate Mason Michael for uh, breaking a new school record uh, with 16 passing touchdowns um, and still going. Uh, still going. So we, we've still got games to go, so he's – um, you know, we hope that he'll extend on that record and he'll set the bar high for um, players to come. And uh, right. we also want to give credit to uh, Terry on Moore. Uh, he had broke the record a little while back, but we, some of this research, it, take, it takes, takes time. time. It does. Um, but, yeah, he, he did break the record. Uh, I believe the previous record was nine. That's right. And currently he sits at 12. That's correct. So, um, and that's 12 receiving. He has another one rushing as well. But um, – but 12 receiving, receiving touchdowns, touchdowns is pretty big for any level, any school. Uh, I know there's, I mean, he's put, he's put up great numbers. Yeah. Um, well, both of them really have. I think in 2A, um, Mason is is the number two in passing yards in 2A, and I think Terry on is number two in receiving yards. So, um, you know, they're in the lead company. Right. So, and, you know, and I'm proud of them. I'm, I'm proud of the effort that they put forward. you got two players that here you have uh, Mason coming off an injury, did a lot of hard work in the offseason to be able to get back and play this season. And he has progressed every single game uh, more and more. Uh, he's got more comfortable in the pocket, uh, making good reads, good calls. I love watching him on the field. Terry on the same thing. You know, last year he was out of position. He played quarterback for us. Made a sacrifice for the team. Right. Uh, Very unselfish. Um, and I'm glad to see him see rewards this year and, to, and right. to be able to get that exposure. And again, congratulations to both those guys, to uh, to Mason and Terry on. I mean, huge accomplishments. And, uh, you know, Legondrick Snell, I want to give him the shout out too. He was the previous record holder That's right. that Terry on broke uh, with the nine receiving touchdowns. And, there was some other good names, really close right in there with uh, uh, Nassio Washington, a uh, big man, and uh, J.P. Peterson. He was also another receiver that was right there in the mix. But uh, Legondrick Snell had the one more touchdown ahead of those guys. Right. And uh, anyway, we, you know, we, I'm just excited that this history now and these records can be noted, and that <clears throat> the players coming up in the future Red Raiders have something to look at and goals to set. So if I'm a wide receiver, I got Terry Young's, uh record right here on, right my, on my locker, and this is my goal. And, you know, and it gives good goals to set. Uh, it's, you know, we know we got to work hard to reach those goals. And I uh, was just excited to see it all kind of come forth uh, that night in such a big game against a big opponent. Right. Again, seventh ranked Toombs County in the state in double overtime. Uh, it, it, I don't know what else I could ask for, Coach. I mean, it, I, I, I could, I do. We could have yeah. come away with a win, <laughs> but um, you know, it. We did have some good takeaways from the game. No, uh, there is. There, there's positives, and, and it's you know where we at, we're at currently. It's it's not where we want to be when we're done. Um, but you know we're playing a lot better football than, than we had in the previous year, and uh, we're, we're an emerging program. And as long as we we continue to build on our positives and, and reduce our negatives, uh, you know we should be competitive and have a chance to win any game. Yeah, well, good deal. Well, coach, let's take a real quick break and get our sponsors a little recognition. And Raider Nation will be right back with you right after this break.
Welcome back to the Red Raider Coaches Show. Uh, Coach Goss, so we got another big game. Thankfully, uh, we're back at home this week. Uh, yeah, we're, we're finally back at home. It's, it's been a, a, a long stretch, and that's just the way the schedule worked right. out. Uh, but, you know, we are happy to be, um, be back home and, and here for homecoming. Yes, sir. Well, uh, speaking of homecoming, I know that's going to change up, and I know for a lot of coaches that's, uh, that's a nightmare sometimes as far as keeping the players yeah, kind of it's there's a lot going on in the week. There's a lot going on in the week, and you and it's our job to keep the players focused and and, and really focus on you know what's important now, which is it's our part is to win the game. Yep. Yeah. To my understanding, uh, I guess they're going to do homecoming before the game. They are. So it's going to start at seven, 7 o'clock on the dot. So Raider Nation, definitely, if you're coming for uh, to see uh, the homecoming court, come on the field and see who wins homecoming king and queen. You, you want to get here about 6.30. I wouldn't wait for the 6.55 trying to get in the gate and get to the stands and all that. So you want to get here at 6.30. Uh, there'll be some good music playing, I'm sure, over the intercom system. And you can watch the players warm up in the meantime and uh, get situated and get seated. But, Coach, uh, looking at film this week, uh, game we got coming up tomorrow, you know, what have we had to do to prepare for Swainsboro and what can we expect out of Swainsboro? Oh, well, offensively, uh, Swainsboro spread. They got those those two um, receivers and one player with receiver and tight end, depending on the formation. That um, are both going to NC State. They're the twin brothers, and, and they're both you know they're both athletic and long. They're both about six four, about two twenty. Yep. Um, you know they're they're good football players. Um, they're going to try to get them the ball in space. They have a a new quarterback, so so that's a little different. Um, and they got a big, strong running back, but they're they're going to try to spread the ball around and, and try to work it in space. Well, from what I watched on film, even with the two big receivers, I would say they're definitely more run heavy than they are pass. They are. Uh, their their young quarterback doesn't quite throw it as well. Yep. Um, but I will say that you know they're they want to spread you out and and run that big guy. Yeah, and they hand him the ball a lot. Uh, from from what I watched on film, so the right. fullback, you can expect him to get uh, probably the most touches throughout the night. Uh, there's no doubt he'll touch the ball the most. Yeah, he's definitely a workhorse. And uh, speaking of both the big guys, the receivers, uh, you know, watching them a lot, most of their passes are just quick outs, and then let them make a play after. Right. I didn't see too too many way downfield big plays. You know, uh, uh, you don't see too much out of that, uh, you know, from them. Uh, you might catch a, a quick slant, but most of it is just a quick out, shooting it out to the receiver and let him try to make a play one-on-one. -on -one. And if they, you know, they get down on the goal line, uh, you know, here comes the fade. Yeah. And those guys are big on using their hands and, and pushing off, um, but they're getting away with it. Yeah. So, uh, well, I'm sure you guys got a good plan in place to uh, to try to match up against them oh, and to – to put stops in there. How were the players this week uh, at practice, Coach? Uh, I know it was coming off of a very emotional loss, but also homecoming week and right. craziness well, of that. I, I think our guys, um, they know what's in front of them. They, they, you know, now obviously the first two region games haven't gone the way we've won them to, but we're very capable of winning region games and getting into the playoffs. Um, you can't go back and change the past. All you can do is learn from it. So I think that's the mindset they have. Um, you know, that's what's what we constantly, you know, teach to them and preach to them that, um, you know, we can't change that now. Yeah. You can't change a double overtime loss. Uh, it was a, a great game. We just didn't come out on the right side of it. And now we have to move forward and prepare for our next opponent. Um, and, and I feel like most of us have, have done a good job of that. Yeah. That, that, that we have, you know, turned our focus to Swainsboro and, and started working on, on how we're going to beat them. Yeah. Um, on the defensive side of ball, Coach, uh, I, I see the, the two big guys that play receiver. They put them on, over on the defensive side of, of the ball, and their defensive line looks pretty stout. But outside of that, I didn't see a ton of speed defensively. Uh, well, they're going to be able they're, to run. Um, yeah. They're, they're, they're going to be able to run as a team. Uh, their D-line definitely is, is the highlight. I feel like the highlight of their defense. Definitely, definitely. Um, and, you know, we have to – to be able to hold up against them. Um, and if we do, you know, we'll, we'll have another successful night offensively. And if we don't, um, it 
could be tough. Yeah. I mean, well, they're talented. So they are, and, and they're just one of those teams that could, it depends on how they show up, that they could, um, they can be really, really great, or they usually just perform, you know, mediocre. And, and from looking at film, it's been kind of that way if they went into a place with certain expectations. But a lot of teams are that way. It's high school boys, and um, things happen during the week, or, you know, uh, emotions get up to here and then crash, or, or whatever plays into it. Uh, I know it's difficult for you guys to keep players on an even kilter go in in a, in a high profile game, a region game, like a Jeff Davis or a Toombs, all right guys, we, we want to be right here, here's where we right. perform the best. Uh, and and that's, that's something a team, each team has to learn and may not be the same from year to year. Yeah. Uh, according to, you know, how your leadership handles all the energy yep. and how they handle, how they handle, you know, the social media and people talking in the community and this and that. And so, uh, you know, for us, uh, the, the more I isolate our guys and just focus on what we teach them, the better they seem to perform. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the more we dial in on, on this is our job, the rest of that, that's just, you know, that's for the fans. That's for, for other people out there to listen to, talk about. That's, that's for everybody else. The well, only thing we need to worry about is this right here, what we put in front of us this week. Um, and the more we more the more we're dialed in on that, uh, the better team we are. Well, Coach, I, you know, I appreciate the product that you have brought before Raider Nation and myself week in and week out. Uh, especially again after that game last week, and you know, going from a team that beat us by thirty eight points last year and to take them into double overtime, uh, we're breaking school records. The kids are still trying hard. They're fighting. I know they're emotional. They're working hard. Um, you know, you guys are going to keep pushing them, um, okay. striving for um, more perfection, more excellence, and you know that's what we want to see out of Bacon County football. And it's going to be another exciting night against Swainsboro. Yeah, there, there's not going to be, um, you know, any any blowouts in the region, any blowouts for us in the region play. I think, um, you know, every Friday night it's going to it's going to be a dogfight and. Um, that's just what it is. Yeah. And if, if we're fortunate enough to get up on somebody, you know, great. But uh, there's a lot of really good football in this region. And um, we're going to continue to make it better because we're going to get better. Absolutely. And so, um, you know, we're going to, we've got another opportunity to go out and, and prove uh, that we're, we're a much improved team uh, Friday night. And, you know, we're going to get after it. Good deal, Coach. Well, it, um, it's going to be an exciting night, night for sure. And Raider Nation, just like Coach said, week in and week out, it's going to be a dogfight. And the biggest impact we can make as a fan base is showing up. Oh, uh, like the crowd that we had at um, Toombs County, the crowd that we had at Jeff Davis, you know, Raider Nation is loyal. But when we show up and we, we get behind our players, uh, it's that little bit of edge. And we're here at home, so there's really no excuses That's right. uh, to, to not come. Uh, come on out. If you need to wear a mask, bring your mask. Keep it with you. Put it on if you feel like you're uh, in close quarters or in, in that situation. Or if you uh, feel comfortable and want to leave it off, you can do that as well. So it's not required that you have to wear your, your mask in the stands, but we advise you to do so. Um, it's going to be a good atmosphere. The band's going to be there. Cheerleaders are going to be there. Homecoming court. Uh, it's a big night, so we're expecting, you know, a, a big turnout, and uh, and we hope that can be that little bit of edge that we give our players, coach, and that little bit of boost. And you know, we want to cheer you guys on. And again, we appreciate what you're doing, and you know what's going on with Red Raider football. Well, thank you. <laughs> you know, all I know to do is just, we're going to continue to work. To, uh, me and my staff will continue to work. The try to improve it and the players are going to work and uh, you know we're, we're trying to build something special here and, Good and coach. I, I appreciate the, the patience I know it ain't happening overnight uh, but it is happening yeah well coach uh, this week uh, we'll finish up with this we've got uh, I know 10 mile Baptist Church I appreciate T boy Carter and all he does uh, not just for feeding our players this week but he helps us to organize 
uh, feeding the players each and every week to get right. the churches lined up and all that. So and that's just one one more thing that I don't have to do. That's which right. Is, is always appreciated. Very much so. So T Boy Carter, we we appreciate all that you do for Red Raider football, uh, Ten Mile Baptist Church. We thank y'all for uh, our pregame meal this week. And uh, coach, we uh, last week it just slipped my mind. We had uh, was it Stefan? First African Baptist Church uh, yes. was last week that uh, that fed our, our Raiders, and we appreciate them very, very much. And uh, again, we've got uh, breakfast in the morning. I um, want to thank Phil Carver uh, Drug Company uh, for feeding our players breakfast last week. And then this week, we've actually got, and I have went through this Raider Nation and let it slip my mind. I'm trying to think. I'll tell you what, I will post it on our Facebook page. Yeah. That'll be the quickest way and get me out of trouble here. I don't want to list somebody uh, making incorrect. So uh, I'll be sure to post that and get them some recognition. And, and again, we want to thank everybody for the Feed the Raider program. What's going on, Coach? We we want to continue to try to do that. I, if you, you know, absolutely. Um, you know, these guys, they, they eat a lot of food. And it's, it's great that we can continue to put uh, things in them that they need. We we do, you know, we try to do peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and and chocolate milk and Ensure or, or some type of nutritional substitute and then uh, we also, you know, we try to put, you know, put snacks out there and just and Just keep them eating because the calories that they burn during the course of a given day um, You know, it's it's a much higher number than, than the nutrition or the calories that are they're taking in through their school lunches and school breakfast, so it's it's just really a math equation. We got we just got to put more in. Yep. Um, well, if you want to bring De uh, Debbie snacks or anything like that, uh, you can go to Jay's IGA. They have a donation box up front in front of the registers. Uh, I know we need jelly. Uh, if you want to go in and buy a jar of jelly, you can take it there. If you've already got jelly, it's unopened, or you've purchased it somewhere else from Sam's or out of town. Uh, you can go by State Farm and drop it off there with John Hughes. Uh, the same with the Little Debbie Snacks, uh, those help out as well. And if you would like to make a contribution, these contributions go to help provide these meals, to do breakfast, to do uh, lunches. If a church is unable to cover it, uh, we have to cover it, and then also to do the post game. And uh, we've been doing a little bit of something on Thursday as well been doing uh, right. a Thursday morning breakfast. Uh, we thank Miss Erin Andrews and her team for, they have put that on for quite some time and uh, right. doing Thursday morning breakfast. And now that you're going to Thursday afternoon practice, we may have a Thursday afternoon meal. So she's gonna work on that for you next week. All right. Uh, her and Miss uh, Linda Michael and uh, the other ladies that help her. So we appreciate them and all that they do. And uh, James Miles Auto Sales is who's uh, sponsoring this week. So I, I want to get James. We appreciate James and uh, all that he does. Former Red Raider, uh, always loyal, uh, exciting. Every time I go by there, we cannot, absolutely cannot, not talk about Bacon County football. <laughs> you know, so I enjoy it every time I go by to see him. Uh, son just bought a truck from him this year. Glad we were able to give him some support there. So make sure you support these local businesses. Uh, help them out as much as you can, and we love you, Raider Nation. We appreciate you. We hope to see you Friday night uh, against this big game uh, region opponent against Swainsboro. So uh, let's show up and show out, and Coach, go Big Red. Horns up.